All right, so the last thing we finished was going through all the layers and doing color adjustments to them before we do a refined cutout. And I'll, I'll go back through how to do that, but I might as well uh, revisit some. So this layer here, this coral, that I added in to cover up some spots that I didn't have filled in, is looking a little dingy. So I'm going to revisit color adjusting that just to remind you. And the first one is I go to image adjustment. I'm on the layer I want to adjust. That layer is rasterized. It won't work if it's a smart layer. And I go to levels first. This is the light and dark adjustments. And the safest way to play with levels is with this mid-tone slider, the one in the middle. You can push things brighter or darker, right? So I might push the mid-tones a little bit brighter. And then I can actually limit the highlights or limit the shadows by bringing these output levels into the middle. And that kind of decreases contrast a little bit. And then if I need to, and I think I do in this case, I need to darken the shadows. So I go to the dark slider and just move that in a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could do that with the highlight slider as well. And that's kind of your brightness and contrast. Now what I love about these direct adjustments is they are affecting the pixels directly. Did I accidentally hit cancel? <laughs> so if I do it and I adjust these things, I make it a little bit brighter there, make it a little bit darker here, make it a little bit brighter here, limit the output, limit the output, and say OK. Then I can just hit Command Z and I can see if it made a difference. And it does, it brightens it up, it makes it less murky, makes it so it can sit into the space better. So I definitely wanna have it in a video and now I have it in more than one video that we do uh, levels adjustments as the first step in any kind of color adjustment. Next, I'm going to go to my next favorite, which is color balance. And this is safest to play with midtones. You always want to preserve the luminosity for this basic treatment. And I'm just going to make it a little bit more yellow in the midtones to kind of match this mid range here with the other coral. Maybe a little bit more red. Maybe a little bit more green or maybe less. You don't really know until you try it. And then I can go to shadows and I'll usually push shadows opposite to the highlights. At least I do that more and more as I get into the uh, foreground. So if I cool down the shadows, I'm going to warm up the highlights just slightly. And then again, you can hit Command Z and see what a difference that makes. So you can do multiple rounds of color, right? I might even go to this, this very background cement city layer and just play with its color balance one more time now that I have these other elements in here. So I can kind of push it further back the blue and that's kind of nice and I might go to the big coral and play with its color balance it's a little yellow push that a little bit more towards the blues especially in the shadows there we go take a little bit of that yellow out of it we can go to the highlights and maybe put a little oh, I don't know yeah, that's pretty good. Other adjustments you can do before you do refined cutting out is just free transforming. Command T, warping, if it's organic stuff, having it kind of fill in where you want it to fill in. Right? This isn't like collage where you're just stuck with the piece you cut out. You can actually alter it like we learned with the cartoon jumble. And I'm trying to fill the frame of my sketch. All right. So that foreground is definitely foreground. Those barrels are definitely middle ground. This coral around is definitely going into the background. And then we have the far background going back and back and back and back. So all that's working. We just have a lot of edges, like around the barrels, around the coral, that aren't perfectly refined yet. So before we do that, there's one last color adjustment we can do, and this is gonna be what's called a direct adjustment, not 
Um, and it's going to use a tool instead of an adjustment setting. So we use levels to darken and lighten the whole layer. And you can do that on a selection as well. But you can also use this new tool we're going to look at called Dodge and Burn. And the sponge is helpful too. It looks like a little black lollipop. And I'm going to use it on this big coral layer because it's just a little too bright for this setting. And this is how you can actually change the direction of the light. And you can put shadows in. So if you have like a big rock in a lake, you're going to want to shadow underneath that rock. And sometimes you have to burn it in. So the first one I'm going to show you is Dodge. It's the one on top. It's the black lollipop. And you'll see the settings at the top. Now the setting for Dodge, Burn, and Sponge should always be, in my opinion, the safest way to use, done in this way. It should be a soft, round, pressured brush, like we've been using for eraser. It should be fairly large. It should only affect the midtones. That's the safest, otherwise you get to, to white very quickly. And your exposure should be less than 30. It's a very strong tool, so I'll, I'll usually be around 15. You want protect tones turned on. So now watch what happens. I'm using my, my stylus, it's pressure sensitive, and I can put highlights in. What Dodge does is it adds highlights. It brightens the midtones where I hit it. And we tend to overdo this. And what's great is I can go to my history and see all those dodges. And then if I just toggle them on and off, you can see what a difference it makes. And now all of a sudden I have light coming from a side I didn't have light coming from before. Now I might actually want to make it coming from this side since that matches the rest of the reference. Oh, but I'm on the wrong layer. And I can do this on different layers. You can bring out the highlights selectively in different layers. Okay, so let's go to the big coral and let's paint highlights on one side and not the other. Because they just look kind of flat compared to other things. So now that's the dodge tool. The burn tool does just the opposite. You want to do it on mid-tones, you want to keep it uh, at an exposure of less than 30, and you want the brush to be soft and round and big at a 0% hardness. And this is where, with the mid-tones, I can put in shadows directly. And I'm going to shadow some parts of this coral so that it sits into the scene a lot better before I cut it out fully. I've got little debris still. Now you'll notice as I burn it, it's getting a lot more saturated. The color is getting more intense, and that's not always what you want. So look at the difference between when I burned and when I didn't. Okay, so how do I get that color to be less intense? Well, that's where this third tool comes in, the sponge tool. You can set it to either desaturate, which is take away color, or desaturate to add more intensity to the color. So I'm just going to hit it softly with the same settings and desaturate it a little bit just where I hit the shadows because shadows and highlights neither of them are very saturated one has light added to it one has light taken away but neither intensifies the color and okay, now if I go back before I did any dodging burning or or um, sponging this is why we keep 500 history states Ooh, look at all that big difference in the color adjustment. And sometimes you just have to do it as a spot treatment like that. And they can all be very helpful. So remember, you can burn, you can desaturate, you can bring out highlights. You have the power to do it, not just on the whole layer, but on individual place with the stylus where you press. Okay, now I'm going to save it. I think I'm done with my color adjustments. I'm ready for cutting out. And what, I'm going to, what am I going to start with? I'm going to start with the immediate foreground, the thing on top. And of course, for me, that's a pretty difficult one. There's a few ways we've learned how to cut things out, right? We can just use the lasso, and we can just cut directly.
can just take all that out, hit delete. And because I have a feather of three pixels, it softens it a little bit, all right? So let's undo that. And instead, let me put zero pixel feather. And then if I do that same thing, because this is the foreground and I want it nice and sharp, even though the image itself is kind of blurry, I can create a sharp edge. Bless you. There's a few different ways to do refined treatment of edges. So that cut it really cleanly, but maybe too cleanly. So what do I like to do? I like to go in with an eraser with like a 50% hardness, not too small a size and 100% opacity. And I like to just bite it down. So the 50% hardness makes it so I can control it and it looks a little bit more believable. It's not so uniform. Now, because this is all organic, this is the other trick I can do. I can use the magic wand and select all the empty space up here because I'm just using contiguous. And then I can tell it, and here, let's get it in here too. I can add shift, add to the selection, get these little bits. Okay, now this is really cool. You know how you can feather? Well, once you've made a selection, you can do what's called refining that selection. And it's called select and mask here in your options. This is only once you have a selection chosen. So if I go to select and mask, it will give me the properties of my selection. And I already have them set to remember some settings. So I, I would recommend that you remember whatever settings you choose. But what I commonly use this for is to feather it a little bit and to grow the selection a little bit so it softens that edge and bites away at it, particularly for this use. So I'm feathering it 4.2 pixels, a radius of 5 pixels, and shifting the edge 9%. So if I say OK, it doesn't look any different, right? But if I zoom in, you see how it changed from being that pixel edge to inside. And if I hit delete, it's actually feathering it a little bit. See that? So that it's softer. I'm going to hit delete one more time. And there, beautiful edges. A little soft, but none of that kind of blue debris around the edges anymore. So let's look at before I did that, just on this foreground. Saw all of this junk, right? All around it, all this, but after, all gone. So we'll get all those little, little bites. Now, is it as accurate? Is it as controllable as going in with your soft edged eraser? No, of course not, but it sure saves you a lot of time. And we're not finishing the, the final effects work for the next Star Wars movie here. We're learning skills and making an assignment. So it's okay to, to know what works fast. Okay, this is a question I get all the time at this point in the assignment. It's what if it just doesn't look very good? <laughs> what if this reference got too blurry? Remember, you only really need to look at it at 100%. Right now I'm zoomed in at 200%. So if you go to view 100%, you'll see how it actually prints. And this isn't terrible. You know, I can live with this. I can use my lasso and select just by hand an edge. Because it's organic, I don't even need to be too careful. And then I can go to select and mask, just like I did with the magic wand, and say OK. It will remember my settings, and then hit delete, and hit delete again until I like it. Right? 